guys, welcome back to Heart Breathings. This is going to be something very different from what you've seen from me before, but I've had a lot of people in my life asking me to talk a little bit more and show about how I meal plan and what I'm eating. I'm eating a uh, program called Brightline Eating, which has four rules, four bright lines that is no sugar of any kind, no flour of any kind, no snacking, so you only eat three meals a day, and um, the fourth one is that you weigh and measure all of your food. And it sounds very limiting, but it's actually been so freeing to me, I can't even explain to you. So I've got this planner. This is just a classic happy planner. I've got all my like portions and everything for the guidelines for the diet at the beginning of the planner. I've been using this for about a year since last October, and I've pulled some of the old months out. Um, just to make it not so bulky, but every week I will go in and I love using the Happy Planner because you know it has those three sections, so it's easy to go breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And um, I will show you guys kind of how I set up my weeks. But usually I will track my weight loss on the sidebar over here, so you can see like I started out at 202.1 and I'm currently at 150.9. Actually, I've gained a little bit of weight since then, um, and you'll see. But I've been kind of stuck at this weight for a couple of months because I haven't been following the exact portion sizes that I wanted to and I would like to get the last 10 pounds of this weight off so I thought this would be a good time now that I'm going back to actually detailing exactly what portions I'm eating to record me meal planning with this and I know this has nothing to do with writing really except that it has to do with sort of happiness and balance in your writing life. I know that as writers, a lot of us do sit for most of our days. And I know when I get stressed on deadlines, I used to just like binge eat really bad foods and um, just, it was just a really hard thing for me. So this Bright Line Eating has been amazing for me personally. And, you know, for some of you, you may watch this and go, okay, that doesn't apply to me, but hopefully you could get something out of at least how I'm meal planning, even if you're not going to follow the Bright Line Eating way, which is totally fine. There's no judgment for me at all. It's just, this has been what's worked for me. So um, at the end of the video, I am gonna show you some of my like before and after pictures and show you come, some of my success because I started this in October last year and I have lost over 50 pounds and I have polycystic ovarian syndrome which is a PCOS if you're familiar with that it has been very difficult for me to lose weight in my life and um, to get control of my hormones and I was pre-diabetic and had all these issues that really hurt me when it came to my career and my writing because I had a hard time like having very much energy and you know when you don't have a lot of energy it's very difficult to be creative and this goes for people who are not even writers. So if you're watching this and you're not a writer, uh, welcome to my channel. And I hope this does kind of give you some ideas of how you can plan your meals in a happy planner, but also um, an idea of what I'm eating that has helped me lose so much weight. Um, so basically what I do at the beginning of the week is I set up the page just to look pretty. And this is just a personal preference, but I've found that the more time I spend making my planner look pretty, like it's a display item in my kitchen, the better I am at actually following through and using it. So it's been kind of a really nice thing for me to take the time to sit down, plan with intention, and you know, make sure that I'm setting things up to look nice. And I don't put my meals Sometimes I will actually add like just a brief note about what we're having for dinner in my main planner, but I do all my meal planning in a separate planner for a very specific reason, and that's because I don't want the meal plan to get lost with other stuff, and I don't want to kind of only halfway do the meal plan. This is so important to me to get healthy and to feel better that I've found that it's so much easier if I will do my meal plan in a specific dedicated planner and then I will show you at the end of the video where this planner lives on my countertop at all times so that it's never a question of what are we going to eat today. Um, I was finding that I was stressing so much especially when I was on writing deadline and things like that and stuff got busy about what I was going to eat every day and you know it seemed like it always fell to me as the mom in the house to figure out what we're eating and to get the cooking done and everything like that and it was just a it was a real source of stress for me because I didn't feel like 
honestly, I just felt out of control. I was a binge eater and the more stressed I would get, the more like sugar and flour or the more we would eat out and spend a lot of money and I would eat really, really bad foods and my weight was just going up and up and up and my energy was going down and so was my self-confidence. So this has been a really, really powerful way for me to take control of what I'm eating and take control of my life in this manner. So um, I like to have it look nice because it's kind of like a little happy bright spot in my week to have this pretty planner that sits on the counter. Um, as you can see in the sidebar here on the left, I have made just some quick notes about what I need to prep ahead of time. So I'm going to make some hard boiled eggs in my instant pot probably tonight and I need to cut all the veggies and get those ready to go. Um, then I've also got my weight, my starting weight and where I am at currently um, just as a kind of a motivational spot there. I used to weigh when I first started out on the diet uh, every single day just to kind of keep an eye on what my weight was doing and what was affecting me and I was using an app called Monitor Your Weight to watch the weight go down and it was going down surprisingly fast. It was really great. Um, if you're familiar with PCOS, you know just how like slow and awful it can be to try to lose weight so it was super encouraging to see that but now since I'm losing weight very slowly or like over the last couple months not really at all, I have only been weighing in on Friday so I just mark that once in my planner. Then what I do, I have um, a little sign here that just says breakfast, lunch, and dinner just to kind of show you guys and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually write out every single ounce and stuff that I eat. Now I have a little uh, scale that stays on my uh, it stays in a drawer in my kitchen and I just pull it out when I go to prepare each meal. And so I have two, really three breakfasts that I kind of alternate. So I have six ounces of berries, one hard boiled egg, an ounce of grits with uh, water. And this is basically just one pack of like instant dry grits with nothing else in it. And then I save uh, part of my protein, which is four ounces of almond milk to go with my morning coffee, my espresso. Um, so that's one of my breakfasts. Then my main lunch for the week, and I eat this kind of several times a week, is what I call my salad. And it took me a few weeks to get this exactly the way that I wanted it to be in terms of like experimenting with different kinds of like combinations of things in my salad to make sure that I really enjoyed it and looked forward to it every day. And um, it's basically an eight ounce mix of mixed greens, corn, cucumber, tomatoes, and banana peppers, and then I use a little bit of hummus. Sorry, this part got kind of cut off in the video. Um, but then I put a little bit of hummus, feta cheese, and seeds as a mix of for my protein. And, um, you know, with Brightline eating, it'll say like, oh, you need one protein serving, but you can mix it up. So like one protein serving is uh, four ounces of hummus. But instead of that, I do one ounce of hummus, a uh, half an ounce of seeds and a quarter ounce of feta cheese to get my protein in there. Um, and then I also put in one ounce of Kalamata olives, which is my fat for the day and um, half of my fat and then I do half an ounce or half a tablespoon of olive oil with balsamic vinegar and Dijon mustard for my dressing and then again for the protein I had saved two ounces of almond milk to put into my espresso so just one way that you can kind of mix things up and I have this salad several times a day now on the official Brightline eating you're supposed to have more than um, you're supposed to have 20 ounces of vegetables a day. And I just found that I could not eat 20 ounces of vegetables a day. So I modified my Brightline eating to eat eight ounces with lunch and eight ounces with dinner, which comes to 16 ounces total. But I stick to that. I don't say, oh, today I'm gonna have 16 and then tomorrow I'm gonna have 20 or whatever. It's 16 ounces every single day. So the consistency is what's the most important. So um, instead of going on to my dinners, I go ahead and write out everything that I'm having for breakfast and lunch first because those are kind of like repeated things. So a second example of something that I have for breakfast is overnight oats, which I absolutely love this. It's super easy. I just got some like wide mouthed canning jars, like glass jars, which I would prefer to use glass instead of plastic. And I put in an ounce of rolled oats, um, four ounces of almond milk, some peanut butter, chia seeds, and sometimes I'll put a little bit of coconut in there. And then I will also have usually six ounces of grapes with that. Then you can see on Wednesday, I'm repeating the same 
breakfast for Monday, that hard-boiled eggs, grits, and berries breakfast with coffee. And then on Thursday, I'm repeating the overnight oats and the six ounces of grapes. And you can see I started to write in the coffee, but then I was like, oh yeah, I don't have coffee on those days because I don't save enough protein back on there. So um, what I actually do on those days for my caffeine is I just have some um, like chai tea or something with, that doesn't have sugar in it. So um, then on Friday, I'm going back to the hard boiled eggs with berries meal. And then you'll see on Saturday and Sunday, what I like to do is I found this recipe from Katie's Bright Kitchen online, which is a chef who has a lot of Brightline eating friendly recipes. And so I found these um, like baked oatmeal rounds and I did not try these until I was well into my program because I think they could be kind of triggering because they sort of look and taste like cookies. But um, if you want to check out that recipe, I will link it down below. Um, I love these oatmeal rounds. So I make those. It's basically um, just a combination of uh, oats, bananas, cinnamon, and peanut butter is basically what's in it. And then I add some berries to that um, like on the side. All right. So for the lunch, I also will do, like I said, salad. So I just call it my salad and I know by now like what all the portions are. So I don't write it out every single day. And as you can see on Tuesday there, I have that we are eating out Mexican, but my like writing down all the portions of the salad took up two days. So I just put the Mexican down there. And for Mexican, what I will usually do is, um, I'll just do like a taco salad and just not eat the shell. So pretty simple there. Um, then on Thursday for my lunch, I'm doing what is another um, lunch I wanted to try, which is just basically hummus and vegetables. So it's two ounces of hummus, one ounce of mixed nuts, and then um, a bunch of different veggies cut up and six ounces of berries. So for veggies this week, I'm going to try celery, cucumber, tomato, and pepper. And I also have a tablespoon of peanut butter to eat with the celery. So that's one way to just try um, to mix it up because I was getting a little bit tired of the salad every single day. Um, so then on Friday, I'm going back to the salad. On Saturday, I'm going back to the hummus and apples and berries with veggies. And then on Sunday, um, I think I write out my salad again. Sorry, I didn't do a great job of making sure that every single day was covered there. All right, so now for dinners, this is where I do kind of tend to mix things up a little bit more, but I do try to stick to a basic menu for dinners because the more complicated I get trying to like come up with exactly what I want to eat every week, um, like trying to do new recipes, the more stressed I get. So for me, it's just been so much easier to be like, okay, Monday nights is sausage and broccoli. And um, I mix it up a little bit, but this is a pretty standard week for me. So on Monday night, I'm having, uh, we'll have four ounces of sausage each, eight ounces of roasted broccoli, and I just sprinkle a little bit of lemon juice on top of that, and then half a tablespoon of blue cheese that I like to mix um, or, you know, dip the sausage in. And I usually will use some mustard as well, but I didn't write that down. And then half a, half a tablespoon of olive oil, which I will sprinkle on the broccoli before I roast it. And then I also wrote like in um, parentheses down at the bottom mac and cheese, because that's something that I don't personally eat because I don't eat flour, but my son, I do make it for my son. So I just added it to the meal plan, even though I can't have it. On Tuesdays, I ha am having six ounces of black beans with four ounces of roasted Brussels sprouts and a four ounce salad. And then a tablespoon of olive oil goes again on the Brussels sprouts. I just kind of um, use just a little bit and mix it in. And then I also have rice there in brackets because that's another thing that I will not be eating at dinner because I don't have grains at dinner. But my son and my husband will be eating that. So I added it so I know to cook it. <laughs> All right. So on Wednesday night is taco night. So I am doing three ounces of ground turkey and then half an ounce of cheese for my protein. And then eight ounces of vegetables will be a mix of lettuce wrap, cucumber, tomato, and corn. And then I add an ounce of avocado for my fat and then a tablespoon of sour cream. That's kind of a mix because you can have two tablespoons of sour cream or two ounces of avocado. So I did one of each like in half portions, if that makes sense. All right, so Thursday night, I am having a four ounce veggie burger with no bun, just the burger, and eight ounces of roasted zucchini and sweet potato, and then I will do half a tablespoon of mayo that I'll just kind of um, put on top of the veggie burger. I know that sounds maybe gross, but it's delicious. Then on Friday night, we are going to eat out, and we're going out to a place called Melvin's Barbecue, and 
Um, you know, when you eat out with Bright Line Eating, you have to just be kind of careful because so much stuff that you don't even think has flour and sugar in it. So I like to write out, you know, especially before I go out to eat, I write out exactly what I'm going to order. And of course, I can't weigh out four ounces of brisket without actually like taking my scale, which some people who do Bright Line Eating actually do that. Um, but I don't take my scale with me. It's kind of big. Um, but I'm going to have just a small portion of brisket with no sauce and no rub on it. And then four ounces of side salad there with four ounces of corn and then a tablespoon of dressing and I probably will get the blue cheese there which blue cheese often does not have a lot of sugar in it it's usually like less than the third ingredient so it's usually safe um, but I will look it up before we go and then on Saturday night I'll cook six ounces of lentils so that'll be another thing I do in the instant pot eight ounces of roasted veggies which I'm thinking squash pepper cauliflower and um you know, anything that might be left over from the week. And then a tablespoon of butter, which I'm using vegan butter. I have not completely cut dairy out of my diet, but I have cut a little bit. And then on Sunday night, we are doing um, basically a breakfast. I'm going to have a two egg omelet with four ounces of tomato, spinach, and peppers, four ounces of roasted broccoli, and then a tablespoon of olive oil and an ounce of avocado. So that is my week planned. And basically my family eats exactly what I eat, except my son takes sandwiches to lunch with him. But other than that, that is what my whole family eats. Like when I ever, whatever I'm eating, my husband eats the same thing. He just usually will eat a little bit more and I don't weigh his food. Um, and of course my son is sick, so he will eat a little bit less. And I do add special things for him, like the mac and cheese or whatever. But for the most part, we have successfully cut sugar and flour out of all three of our diets and we're all feeling so much better and so much healthier and it wasn't something that I thought that I would ever be able to do is like completely give up sugar and flour but I have been so happy I have done it you guys it looks like it's a lot of work but it's just been so freeing and so amazing for me I cannot tell you how much so here is a quick look at my weight loss journey over the last several months Okay guys, so that is just a quick look at my weight loss journey. If you'd like to see a video of my full weight loss journey and how I've stayed motivated and how it has affected my life and my career and writing, I would be happy to do a video on that. Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, here is a quick look at where my planner sits throughout the week and it makes it really easy to come back to and have a little reference there of what we're cooking throughout the week. All right, so that is the end of this video. I know it's a little something different for heart breathings, but if you have enjoyed it and it's helped you in any way, please comment down below. I would love to have you subscribe to this channel. I would love for you to hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified as soon as a new video goes up from me. On Thursday this week, we'll be moving on to the sixth video in my How to Plot Your Novel series. And of course, there'll be more planning stuff coming for me in the future as well. Okay guys, I hope you've had a great weekend and I will see you in my next video. Bye.